Millions of people in Sydney and now Melbourne, as well as the rest of Victoria, are currently in lockdown. For the Greater Sydney region, this week marks the fourth week into lockdown. Lifeline, Australia's leading suicide prevention service, is continuing to receive a 25% increase in the volume of calls Australia-wide since the surge in new COVID-19 cases began earlier this month. Joining me live now for more on this is John Brogdon, Chairman of Lifeline Australia. John, thanks so much for your time this evening. First, I want to talk about what Lifeline Australia is doing for the millions of residents both in Greater Sydney and Victoria now stuck in lockdown. Lifeline's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week for Australians in crisis, most particularly on our 13 11 14 telephone crisis number. We're there for people whenever they need us, and we really do encourage people to call if they feel they're in crisis. The other message that's really important today, and it'll be important over the next few weeks of lockdown, is for people to make sure they don't suffer in silence. Reach out, get some help. It's okay not to be okay in these extraordinary times. And it appears we're going back into the sort of level of crisis we had a year ago, and we haven't hit the bottom yet. So people need to be in this for the long haul. They need to know this will last some more weeks uh, and it could get worse than it is now. Now, John, how much of an increase in assistance have you seen since these most recent lockdowns? Well, we're going back to the sort of numbers we saw in the middle of last year, in the middle of COVID. So at that point, don't forget, we had every state in either a lockdown or a border closure. So we're going back to that very quickly, and that's around an average of 3,000, 3,100 calls a day. Two years ago, we were getting 2,400 calls a day. So it just demonstrates the level of anxiety, the level of stress and pressure, and the worries that people have. And all of that is legitimate, because all of a sudden, yet again, we've seen further restrictions, important as they are in New South Wales, that mean people can't work, People can't get out the way they were getting out. And we need two things as human beings, among others. We need human contact and we need certainty. And at the moment, we're getting neither. And that's hard. It's hard to give certainty during uncertain times. But we crave certainty as human beings. We want to know what's happening tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. It's part of our DNA. And the sooner we get a pretty clear line to what this looks like, the better. Judging by the numbers today, there is still a lot of uncertainty. In terms of the increase we've seen in suicides, John, particularly in teenagers and young adults following homeschooling and, of course, the feelings of isolation over the past 18 months, what is Lifeline offering these young adults who are struggling? Well, the good news is that we actually haven't seen an increase in suicide numbers. In fact, we saw a decrease, particularly in New South Wales last year. So 10 years ago, when I first became the chairman of Lifeline, if you said to I would have said to you that an increase in calls is a bad thing. It means something's going wrong. I've now changed my view because what we saw last year is a massive increase in our calls, but a reduction in suicides. However, at the same time, we did see a massive increase in the people presenting, particularly kids, presenting to hospital emergency departments with self-harm and other sorts of things. So... What I'm hoping is we see this again. We see people reaching out, getting help and falling short of taking their own lives. That's really important. So I can't stress, I cannot stress enough the important message, please don't suffer in silence. Please reach out. There is nothing to be ashamed about, about feeling really off at this point of time, really not okay at this point in time, because they are extraordinary times. And Part of what we're facing well, as well, of course, is that people thought we'd got through the dark days. People thought we'd, we'd licked this, we'd fixed this, we'd got ahead of it. But, of course, we're back where we were before. And probably, from all that we can see, with vaccinations still being relatively low, we've got a couple more months of this before we begin to see vaccinations really high. That can help us to insulate us against the continuing risk of this particularly virulent strain of COVID, this Delta strain. And I think one of the things we have to realise compared to last time is that this is worse than last time. It's worse than last time, not just for us mentally, but it's worse than last time for us physically because this strain of COVID, this new COVID, is actually much worse than the old COVID. 
Now, John, let's focus in on singles. They've been in the headlines this week, particularly in Sydney. Do you think the state government is going too hard on restrictions for single people? No, look, I, I can only believe what we hear, which is they are following the medical advice to do what they've got to do. But at the same time, you're exactly right. You identify the fact that people who live alone, who may have very small friendship groups, may have very few family members left, whether that's older people, um, maybe uh, people who've lost a loved one very recently, they're going to do it particularly tough. So here's another important message I want to leave people with today. Everybody, all of us, can make a difference during COVID by picking up the phone and ringing somebody who we know lives alone. So this is a two-way street. We don't have to just ask people to reach out. For those of us who are doing OK, every morning you wake up, get a post-it note, write a, write a name down, whatever you want to do, and think of somebody whose day you will change, whose day you will improve, whose day you will make by simply phoning them and being in contact with them. It could be an older relative, it could be a friend you work with who you know doesn't have a lot of people in their lives. I can't stress enough how important it is just a bit of old-fashioned human contact, even go and yell over the back fence, whatever it might be. All of these things, I mean, they're saying really old-fashioned, don't they? But all of these things can make a real difference to simply making sure people stay in touch. Because for many people, their, their world, their circle is so small. Unless they leave the door, unless they go to work, unless they go to shopping or bowling or whatever it might be, there is nothing in their life because their, their life has contracted so much. So we can all make a difference. We can all think of who do I know who really would do with a phone call today from me just to check in, just, just to say good day, just to choose that to mean that they are in one way or another reaching out and getting out beyond their, their day. Uh, their, their, their life. The other point I'd make very strongly is for all of us, get out and have at least an hour's worth of, now we say exercise and people think exercise means you've got to run <laughs> somewhere or swim. Really, just get some sun on your face, get some wind on your face, even get a bit of rain on your face. Just get out from behind your screen, from off your lounge, out of your bed and enjoy an hour of fresh air. I can't tell you how important that is for your mental health, not just your physical health. Yeah, some really important messages there. I want to hone in on what happened today, John. Um, feeling for all the tradies out there that have been told yeah. they can't go to work, work for the next two weeks. Do you have a message for them? Yes, look, it is challenging because uh, tradesmen and women often have very clear routines. You know, you get up, you go to work, you do your job, you, can't, you have your... Your, your smoker, your lunch, your afternoon tea, you go home, all of those things are a routine. They're going to miss that routine. So try and mind, maintain some routine. Don't stay in bed all day. Sleep in for a change, but don't stay in bed all day. <laughs> um, don't drink too much. Don't think this is an opportunity to drink uh, heavily um, and, and any of those sorts of excesses in our life. So please look to the fact that this is a short period and keep busy. Um, most tradesmen I know uh, have tools. You know, give them a clean, give them a sharpen them out, do a few of the jobs you've been wanting to do and tidying your youth for weeks and weeks or months and months. So think of it as a week off work, but off work, just to keep yourself going, because you can't go away for holidays. You can't do all the things that you might ordinarily do. So think of it as a, a, a week off work, but find some work things to do to keep yourself busy, keep your mind body and your busy body, uh, your, your body busy, and um, do your very best to keep going through this difficult period of time. And it is hard because last year we were able to keep trades and construction going through all of this period of time, which I thought was fantastic. But clearly this new COVID is so hard on people and spread so quickly. We've got to shut down even tradespeople and construction workers for a period of time. Yeah, great advice there, John. Now, lastly, I just want to touch on the regions. They are feeling it as well. This isn't just a citywide issue for Melbourne and Sydney, particularly in Victoria. The whole state is currently in a lockdown. Any advice for our regions, particularly, of course, the farmers? They are doing it tough with skilled labour shortages. And in New South Wales, they're still uh, battling away with the mice plague as well. Yeah, look, you're so right to point out regional people and, and whether it's the effects that the city locks down are having, are having in them in a business sense or just the fact that they can't go down from Dubbo or, you know, from Geelong or, or wherever it might be to visit the grandchildren in Melbourne and vice versa. So family connections here have been severed as well. 
So once again, it's important to keep a routine. It's important to make sure that you don't fall over in a mental sense and think, gee, I'm just going to stay in bed all day. I, I know this might be easier said than done for many people who are doing it tough. But keep going. It's important to keep a routine, keep up a bit of daily exercise and keep thinking about a positive future and stay in touch with people. You mightn't be able to physically be in touch with the grandchildren in Melbourne or the business partners in Sydney, whatever it might be. But you can pick up the phone, you can do a video conference, whatever you like. So please stay in touch. And as I said, the same applies. If you've got a friend in the country doing it tough, pick up the phone to them and have a chat. Great advice. And thank you so much for what you're doing at Lifeline Australia and for your time this evening, Chairman of Lifeline Australia, John Brogdon. And if you or anyone you know is feeling distressed, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Some really important messages there, particularly for our tradesmen in the Sydney region. You can also visit lifeline.org.au for more support.